Hello, welcome watching another part of tutorial how to fix your Nilfisk E140.3 pressure washer. In this part I'll show you how to replace water seals, groove drinks, because the pump is leaking and there is a low pressure. We don't know yet whether it will be necessary to change the o-rings as well because the oil is inside the pump and we don't have access them there yet so whenever we disconnect the pump we will we will have a chance to check whether the oil is milky and if so it means that the water uh, that the oil seals have to be changed as well, replaced as well. We bought the full pack. The Trust Color Water Kit, item number 127-440-081. And it contains three oil seals, three water seals, and three plastic washers or whatever it is. Probably we'll have to change only the water seals. We will see. What are we going to need is a box, wooden box made of five wooden slots like this. I'll show you why because we will have to position the induction motor in the upright position and then we need battery screwdriver, two funnels, one for, for old oil and one for the new one with the scales on it. I'll use the 10W40 oil castrol. It, it's got uh, 10 SAE 1030 spec or something like that. Then we are going, we are going to need the silicone grease. I use the liquid moly pick for taking out the nylon pick for taking out things like uh, groove drinks or these water seals. Or if you don't have a nylon pick, you can use the thin flat screwdriver. Then Allen key. Uh, I think it's number five. And maybe bit of a slot, wooden slot like this. I will show you and tell you measurements right away. First of all, I will explain you what this wooden box for the induction motor is made of. It's made of five wooden slots. Two of them are 17 by 21 another two are 18 by 21 and the fifth one is at the bottom is 20 and a half by 18 centimeters plus it's got two metal plates right angle like this uh, this one, they are actually roughly two centimeters thick and the hole inside is 14 and a half by 17. That's symmetric, everything is symmetric. But actually this wooden box I have made for the induction motor from the power washer Nilfisk C130 or 135 they are more or less the same in these engines. So when I tried to put in the induction motor from Nilfisk E40.3, it didn't fit inside because it's only a little bit, but it's a bigger one. But it's not a problem at all. Actually, all what you have to do, if you have made bobs like this, is unscrew one of the of the slots, wooden slots, and place it on the side and it's even better. So I'll do it now to show you how to do it. And 
all what you have to do is just to take one of these slots and put it on this side like this. That's it, as you can see, so now we've got box like this, the inside measurements are now 17 by 16 roughly, and the reason why I told you in the beginning that you will need a, such a small wooden slot as well is that it's got, it's got 9 centimeters by 17, less than 17, 16 and, and a half, a little bit more, the reason is because when you position the induction motor inside, you will see that it's still shaking a bit of it. So this will kind of help you. So now we can connect the wooden box to, to the table. So it won't move when we will do replacement. it. Now you can position the induction motor from Nilfisk E40 inside like this. As you can see it fits there nicely. And here is the part why we need this one. You can place it like this and it's way better now. You can even use something like this to, oops, to fit it even tighter and it's even better. Okay, so we have done this and we can continue. Actually, if it's the older power washer and older pool, pump, you should use WD-40 before you start to unscrew the screws so it will go easier, you know, if you apply a little bit of WD-40. It's against the rust and with such an Allen key it would be maybe at the beginning difficult if it's older, so if you've got something like that it's even better. So I'll start. Now when they are partially released, you can use battery screwdriver. As you can see, I put the induction motor inside the box in such a manner that the, where you are connecting water supply, it's heading towards me.
should be alright now. So now we can safely disconnect the pump. Just hold it with both hands and you can put the four screws that hold water pump beside on the table and there you go here are three pistons it's interesting that there, there is not too much oil in there so I don't know if probably we will have to change the oil seals as well because the oil is missing so probably it disappear now I can disconnect the these two parts I don't know if it will go smoothly or not do it slowly no rush as you can see it's slowly disconnecting And I got it. There you go. That's it. I'll put it aside temporarily. Now I'll clean the inside where the, the, where the oil is under normal circumstances. I'll clean it completely and I'll take out the old water seals as you can see. Because they are probably the reason why the, there is a low pressure and there are water leaks. Okay. Over here you can see those three plastic washers or whatever it is and these are valves I think. So first of all I'll interrupt with a little bit. I'll clean this part so I won't bother you and then I'll start again. We'll continue and now I'll show you how to pour out or how to empty the chamber where the oil is. I've already done it, not to get it dirty when I will be showing you how to do it. So what you have to do is just take out these things that keep the induction motor in place. Take it out and don't forget when you are going to pull out this induction motor, don't forget and there is still some oil. For example, I have I had very little oil inside, so it disappeared because the oil seals, oil seals were leaking. But don't forget to hold this. Hold this and then just pour the old 
oil into the container with the scale that you have that you have ready. Whenever it's empty, and now I can show you what's there. I can put it back. Simply, you've got a bearing there, like this, and one metal washer or whatever it is, like this, is on the top of the bearing, and one is at the bottom. So I put it there, and I can place back on the top of this, just don't forget there is kind of a groove, so I can place the bearing on the top of the bottom one, and over here I will put this, okay, so it moves freely, I can place back the wooden start where it was, and we will continue. As you could see, or, the, or as you can see, the level of oil, all oil was minimal, and it's quite black, really black. And I suppose there should be at least 100 milliliters of oil, so I prepared the new one. I can pull it in now, and there will. There are two possible reasons why the oil disappeared. The first one is that the oil seals underneath these plastic washers are worn out, worn out and they are, so I'll replace them. I'll show you how. And another reason is, could be that there is a big o-ring over here. And, but I guess that this o-ring is all right because there were no leaks of oil around. So I won't change it. I don't have one and I won't change it. So I'll just keep it like this. And now I'll pour the 100, roughly 100 milliliters of oil in and I'll see if it's enough or it's necessary to add more. As I mentioned, I'm pouring in 10W40, but if you've got 15W40, it's all right as well. Even the 10W30 will do. As I have spoken to authorized service, and if your machine is not under warranty anymore, you can use these ones. If it's still under warranty, I recommend to give a call to Milfi's authorized service and ask them what kind of oil should be in the chamber where the oil is. As you can see, the, now the chamber is nearly flooded, so it's maybe even less than 100 milliliters. It's all right now. Or I'll put and we will see. So it should be all right now. So it's roughly 100 milliliters, maybe a little, little bit less. And now I have already cleaned this part with the cosmetic sticks like this, where the new water seals are going. Here you can see three of the six valves, one, two, three, and the other part is on the other side. And I check them, springs and everything, they are all right, so I'm not going to change them or replace them. The other side of these valves is here. There could be a possibly leak as well, because there are some O-rings, but I presume that they are all right, so I'm not going to replace them. The, the valves or ventils. 
now I will place where they should be the water seals. They are like this. First, every, before you put them on place, make sure that you apply the silicone grease on them. I have already done it, so what I will do, I will just put them in like this. Here you can see there are there is a grooved part and there is a flat part. So with the grooved part, put them inside like this. It goes nice and smoothly. And the second one, the same way. And the third one. Okay, we have it. As you can see, there is enough silicone grease applied. And now we focus on the other part of the pump. Make sure that you hold it with both hands, because from other side you can see the pistons. And what are we going to do now is we are going to replace this plastic I don't know if it's washer or whatever it's called. And underneath them there are oil seals that we have to replace because they are leaking. It's actually very easy to take out this plastic part. One. And the second. Just remember how they are placed before you take them out. So there is exact way how they have to be placed in. And the third one. Now we can see the top of the pistons and these oil seals, three oil seals. What you have to do now is just one after another push down the piston a little bit, hold it from the other side with the other hand and take out, I think it will be even better to use flat, flat small or flat thin screwdriver to take them out. Okay, I got it. So, I'll just put them aside the same way as I did with the water seals. And I'll do the same thing with the other two as well. Just push the piston down a little bit with your finger and then with the thin flat screwdriver take out the oil seal. Again, remember the way how it was placed, because there is exact way how they have to be put back the new one. And the third one. Okay, I got all of them out. And now, as I mentioned before, apply on every single oil seal enough of silicone grease and push them to the holes. Just make sure that they are at the bottom of the holes. And then whenever they are there, just to push the piston through it.
Okay, so I got one. And the same process with another two. It takes time, but there is no rush. Do it properly, it pays off. And the third one. As you can see, I am trying to fit them there with the other part of the nylon pick because I know that the nylon doesn't scratch the surface either of the oil seal or of the packing, this metal packing. Okay, so I have it. And now I can connect them. And the way how to connect them is this way. So just make sure that the, this part of the valves won't fall out and slowly connect these two parts. As you could hear, it did click and that's a good sign, so hopefully it will be all right. Pistons are moving. Oh, I have to take it apart again because I, want, I forgot one important thing. So I'll do it again, slowly. I nearly forgot to place where they should be, the plastic washers or whatever it is. So place them this way, there. And the second one, the new ones. The old ones, old ones are already aside and the new ones I put back. So now, now it's, it's done properly and I can connect these two parts as I tried before, this way. Slowly. Okay, hopefully it's all right. It did click, so it's a good sign. Pistons are moving, so now we have it. As you can see, I applied a silicone grease on this big O-ring over here as well. And all what we have to do now is just to place the metal pump on the top of the induction motor and there is a new oil in the chamber already. So I'll do it now. Do it this way. And take all four screws and place them where they should be. Now tighten them first with your hand. I 
I got oil in on my hands, so maybe you can help yourself first with the scooter as well. And with the allen key. better to start with your hand because you can feel whether the screw is being tightened properly and whenever you start properly you can even use a battery Diver, so you can and do it this way. Slowly, no rush. We are nearly there. I recommend to tighten them in the end with your hand because you can feel it. I don't have a torque here and I don't even know the exact torque moment that should be applied when tightening those kind of screws. So it's better to do it with your hand. Okay, so we have managed, we have replaced, we have oil seals, water seals and whole pack of thrust water collar kit for this kind of induction motor. This induction motor is 2.1 kilowatt, the induction motor in the one uh, Neurofisk C130 is for example 1.7 kW. show you that everything is done properly, oil changed, oil seals replaced, water seals replaced and the metal pump is tightened to the induction motor. That, that's everything what I wanted to present you today. I hope I helped you a little bit. I would like to thank you for watching and have a nice day. Bye-bye.